All right, so this is part two of looking at what's going on under the hood of my AVR um, code, okay, that I've written in C. We have a C main function right here. You can see right there. I have put a breakpoint on here that corresponds to the curly brace. I have a C function right here. That's the thing that I'm really interested in to see what's going to go on when I call it and send parameters in and then extract a value out. There's also this assembler function, which is something we're going to talk about later. Okay, so don't worry about the assembler function, just this C function right here. Inside of it, I've got my volatiles, as I explained earlier. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to launch the simulation. We're going to hit that first breakpoint. I'm going to take a look at what's going on by looking at the uh, IO memory, special function registers, as well as the SRAM med uh, memory as well. Okay. Uh, we're going to switch this over to my watch window so I can watch the variables from a C perspective. Okay, so, uh, and then after that, we got to disassemble. So I click the disassembly button. And here we go. So I'm going to step through the code. So, first thing that I want to point out is that we are going to be uh, using some assembler uh, mnemonics um, here. And when we get down to, say, this line right here, you'll ask, maybe you'll ask yourself, why is it that we've got this um, uh, 00 and this register 24 bit? This is actually uh, how the, um, the compiler is dealing with the variable um, and, and storing values into it. But we'll show you that in a second. All right, here we go. So we're going to step, step, step. Oh, look, what just happened there? So we just had a, a value of two get moved into memory right there. And let's keep going. We are taking the variables, let's see, my variable, and we're multiplying it by two. How's that going to work out? What's going to happen in here? Oh, look at that. Address location one, it's actually 100 and one now has a value of four, which came from in here. All right, next up, we're going to call a simple C function. So this is the my C function right here. Now you'll notice, hopefully, that we have uh, register 20, 22, and 24. They're gonna be loaded up with these values, one, two, and three. That's because we're passing in parameters in C as arguments into the function one, two, and then three. All right, in the first, second, and third positions, they're actually being stored prior to calling that function. They're being stored, those values are being stored in registers. All right, so we're gonna keep going. So those are now stored in registers. Let me see, we're seeing register 22, just got a value of two, keep going. Register 24, right there, got a value of one. And now, uh, let's see, R20, uh, oh no, that's gonna, this, that line's gonna get called after we come back from the function. Now, um, I'm gonna point out right here that you see 95 preceded by 94, these are the addresses, and then 97 comes after, 96 is missing. The disassembler isn't doing a very good job right here of, of showing what a sort of a two address uh, assembler command uh, is and so you're not actually getting the complete command right here but what's going on you see this call this call is going to be calling to the function it's going to be basically jumping to another location memory where the function um, that we've defined in C is located that's where it's getting at the address is wrong because it disassembled it wrong but let's uh, well if we step next we should get into that function all right oh and there we go so we are currently inside of that function and you'll notice that there's these two push commands right here. These push commands are going to um, uh, be responsible for taking values off the, uh, let's see, values related to the stack and putting them onto R28 and R20, uh, sorry, going the other way around. We're taking the values that are on R28 and R29 and putting them on the stack. After that, uh, there is, uh, let's see, I'm going to skip ahead right here. 
is actually the more interesting, I think, pair right here. What What's going on here now that we flushed R28 and R29? We put them up on the stack. We're actually asking for the location of the stack. The stack itself is, is like temporary memory and it's located at addresses 3D and 3E in RAM. And so if I go down to, where is it? There we go. There's my stack pointer right there, this line right here. And you'll notice that the stack pointer contains the values uh, 0, 8, and F5. That's the location of memory, okay, that contains the, the, um, the last piece of the stack, basically, all right? So 0, 8, and F5 are going to get stored in 28 and 29, or R28 and R29. So we're going to scroll back. R28 and R29, you can see them right there, they're valued at 118 and zero. After these two commands right here, they're gonna contain the stack values, or the stack pointer value, the location of the stack. See, eight and F5. That was the, what was contained in the stack pointer. So that is the location and memory of the stack. And if I go all, and so the stack itself is located down here um, at the bottom of the SRAM data memory that you can see right here. Okay, so next I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Next, next, next. Now hopefully what you'll have noticed is down here where I said the stack was located, one, two, and three just got stored in the stack. Where were they coming from? Where, where was this stuff located? Well, those values were located in those registers we mentioned before, R20, R22, and R24. And the, the commands um, store indirect, STD, with Y and then plus two, plus three, plus four. Y is actually the combination of registers R28 and R29 we put the stack address in R28 and R29, so in, in the combined register Y, and we said, go to the stack with an offset of two, three, and four, temporarily store the values that were found in registers R20, 22, and 24. That is the, uh, very, the, the, the values that were being passed into the function. So we're, we're basically getting these values available in RAM, we're taking them out of the registers, putting them in RAM so that they're available. And we're going to uh, then be able to use them. All right, so I'm going to continue along here. Okay. So um, from there, I need to load values that were that are found in RAM, okay, at stack plus two, stack plus three, stack plus four. I've got to load them into R18, R25, and R24, and then I'm going to make them available for some math operations, okay? Because we're supposed to be taking uh, a bunch of values and adding them together, all right? So we're going to do that. Adding and letting it do its math. All right, so now, I have a value of nine that is stored right here at, an, at a location of stack pointer plus one. That stack pointer plus one right here, stack plus two, three, and four. Plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. Okay, so those variables those values are being made available uh, for the calculations via the stack. Uh, after that, there's some checking in here. We're not going to get into the details of what's going on, but we talked about it in the last video where I'm just thresholding um, 
the result of that math operation between 0 and 20. Don't worry about the branches and comparisons that are in there. I'm going to skip past it. All right. So then we have LDD. All right. So this is going to be a load uh, mnemonic. And again, we're basically going to be taking the value uh, from y plus 1, which was 9. So y again is the stack pointer, plus 1 is that, and we're going to be putting it into R24. Effectively, we're going to be storing it in register R24 so that we can call it back. We're going to check to make sure that that's actually the case when we're back in the main function. All right. And then what happens next is we're popping values off of the stack. The stack itself won't change. All right. But the pointer for it will as we remove values from it and put them back into the, the registers where they were taken from in the prologue. So we're now in the epilogue or end of the function. We're going to pop stuff off the stack and then once we're all done we will return back into the main function. So here we go. We're going to step, 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 step. And again, we're returning the values for R29 and R28 because R29 and R28, which is the combined register Y, which is what we were using internally here for saying where the stack was located. We don't need that anymore. All right, so we're gonna return the old values of R28 and R29 back in, and we return back to the uh, address it before we went into the function, okay, which, Remember the call function right here, or the call command? Right, we're now two lines, or two memory locations afterwards, where we're back here to STS, which is a store indirect, or a store direct, sorry, to RAM. All right, but basically what we're doing is we're saying, well, there was a value that was being stored in R24. We stored that in one of the last commands that we had in our, assemb uh, in our sorry, in our um, C function. When we come back in, we want to grab that value of R24 and we want to put it into, um, it turns out, I, I don't know why it's a zero, zero like this, but basically it's the, um, uh, it's going to be address, I believe it's 100. Okay, I'm going to scroll back up if I can do that. There we go. All right, so that zero F, if I'm right, should get replaced with a value of nine. Let's find out if that's going to actually happen. Yeah, there we go. Oof. There's our value of 9 right there. Uh, and that's stored into address um, 100. That's my output variable. So we now have access to my output variable, which was the output from the function. That's a value of 9. And then from there, we have other aspects of the, the, the function or the, um, the file that I've written up to call up an assembler function. Don't worry about that right now. What was important to point out was the basic mechanisms that go on behind the scenes for um, storing values that are going to get passed into a function and then retrieved from the function, worked on, stored again, and then brought back into the main function or the calling function, the, the function that called the other function. All right. All right. That's it for the second video. Mm -hmm.